Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about the synthesis of acid anhydrides. Uh, the name acid anhydride actually comes about from the uh, from one particular synthesis of acid anhydrides, uh, and that is by di by direct reaction of two equivalents of the carboxylic acid. under the right kinds of circumstances, uh, and this produces the anhydride and uh, a molecule of water. And in fact, the, the anhydride word just means, you know, without water. So we need something here that can act as a dehydrating agent. And, you know, there are a couple of ways that this can be done. Uh, one is just is by a process called pyrolysis, where we just heat the thing up to ridiculous temperatures. So, so like for a, for acetic conversion of the acetic acid to uh, acetic anhydride, we're talking like six eight hundred degrees Celsius, which is crazy, um, but but feasible perhaps in an industrial setting. Uh, This reaction would follow the neutral pathway, because uh, there's no added acid or base. Okay. Um, another variation on this is to use something that is perhaps a dehydrating agent, and we're just careful about it. Uh, so instead of doing pyrolysis at 800 degrees Celsius, we could do sulfuric acid. Uh, but this reaction maybe needs to be kept cold because sulfuric acid would continue to, to dehydrate this thing into other horribleness. Um, but sulfuric acid is a really powerful dehydrating agent. And then this, of course, would actually follow the acidic mechanism. I'm just going to put minus H2O here, even though we're not doing anything specific necessarily to remove the water. Sulfuric acid is actually just really good at absorbing water. Um, the, the problem of, of these two pathways, though, is they're limited to symmetric uh, acid anhydrides. And if we wanted to synthesize, say, acetic benzoic anhydride, if we wanted to make this anhydride, you might think that we don't oh, just take acetic acid, we'll take benzoic acid, and, um, you know, we'll heat them up together, and we'll, we'll react them with the right conditions. And we'll make this anhydride, and you're right, we will make this anhydride, but we will also make acetic anhydride. And we will also make benzoic anhydride. And that is uh, an undesirable outcome. So if you're interested in making a mixed anhydride or a non-symmetric anhydride, the way that you do that uh, is by first converting, and you can do it with either. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take benzoic anhydride. Convert ben, or do it with benzoic acid. What happened? Where did my, uh... okay, here we go. Okay. Right. First, convert benzoic acid, or you can do it with acetic acid. Just convert one of your two acids into the acid chloride using thionyl chloride. And now you have something that's a much better electrophile, and you can react it with other nucleophiles. For example, uh, the conjugate base of the other carboxylic acid. Um, <clears throat> and you can get the mixed anhydride that you want following the basic mechanism. This follows the So I just want to bring all of this back up here on the screen. I know the one product is hidden behind my head, so let me fix that for a moment. Fix that here. Uh, 
uh, because I just want to compare these two outcomes and, and then talk about why the second thing actually works out really well. Um, in the, the, the first version with sulfuric acid review to just heat the crap out of these two things, uh, number one, there's, there's some trouble here in that if you have other sensitive functional groups, they could react. But uh, in order for that you to get uh, the, the specific outcome that you want, you need to guarantee that one carboxylic acid is the electrophile and the other is the nucleophile. But in this case, there is no such guarantee. Both can be the electrophile and both can be the nucleophile. And that's trouble. In this version uh, here, where this react and this reaction follows the basic mechanism, I'll move that over. Right, the acid chloride now is uh, we've made this thing an electrophile only, and we've made the the uh, carboxylate anion something that's a nucleophile only. Down the line, uh, this kind of approach is a really powerful approach when you have. Uh, compounds that can be both nucleophiles and electrophiles in the same reaction, change one of them into something that's only a nucleophile, change the other one into something that's only electrophile, and then you can control the outcome of the reaction to get specifically the thing that you want. In the next video, I'll talk about the reactions of acid and hydrides. Thank you for watching.